Hello, sir. This is the police. We're with your daughters. Sir, you're going to have to come pick them up. Yes, sir. At the school. If you don't come before five, we're going to have to send them to foster care. Well, one of them says their mother hurts them, and the other says, she keeps making men touch me. It was quiet in the room after the police called dad. Like, really quiet. I think no one knew what to say anymore after they heard how we had been living for years. I'm glad Mandy told them, but I was also scared about what was going to happen next. Are we going to live with dad now? What will happen to mom? The police and the teacher walked outside to speak. We could see them talking to each other through the window. Mandy and I just sat in silence and held each other's hands. At least we had each other. Dad came into the classroom with a concerned look on his face. He sat down across from us. Girls, I'm so sorry. And then he hugged us. The last time we saw him was a few weeks ago. We had been seeing him less and less since their divorce. It hasn't always been easy between the two of them. My mom was always difficult. She got brain damage after getting hit by a car when she was 16, which means that she wouldn't be able to mentally age more than a 16-year-old. After they met, they had my older sister Mandy, and then three weeks before I was born, they decided to get married. But that lasted like six months. And after their divorce, Mom turned to alcohol and drugs. Why don't you tell your father what you told us? I didn't even know where to begin first. What happened to your hair, sweetheart? Mom cut it. We had lice in our hair. She wanted to put the cream on for us, but she was hurting us so much that we cried because it hurt so bad. She was screaming and screaming at us. We didn't do anything wrong. We didn't mean to get lice in our hair. I think Lisa had it and gave it to us, but we really tried to stay away from her. The school sent us home because they found it in our hair too, and when we were home, she said she would get rid of it. She made us sit down, and I tried to sit still, but she kept pulling and pulling my hair so hard. So I cried, and she got so angry. I'm gonna cut your hair then. Get rid of them all so you will stop crying like a baby. I told her I didn't want her to do it but she made me scared and just started cutting it. I couldn't stop crying, so she kept hitting me again and again, telling me she wouldn't stop until I would stop crying. She got so mad in the end that she poured the whole thing on my head and it went in my eyes and my nose. I could barely breathe. I hate my hair. I'm so ugly now. No, honey, you're not. We're gonna get you to the hairdresser and it's all gonna be okay. I promise. This happened weeks ago. My hair had been a mess for weeks but no one bothered to ask what happened. My sister has been trying and trying to tell people, but no one listens to her. No one believes her. She hits us all the time with whatever she can, like things from around the house, whatever she has in her hands, clothes hangers, cooking spoons. She even hit me on the head with the house phone once, and she throws stuff at us too. She's always drunk or doing drugs, she spent all the money she had on drugs and drinking. We never have money for school and lunch. Grandma and Grandpa come over to school sometimes and bring us food and clean clothes. But when they don't come, we don't have any food. And then it got worse. My sister had tears in her eyes. Mom told us that she had no money left anymore. She has a lot of men over. They like to sit and smoke drugs together. She told us to stay in our room, and we did, but sometimes, sometimes they come in, and they touch us. Mom said it was okay, and we shouldn't tell anyone. She said that she doesn't have any money anymore, so we had to help her. She said she needed money to buy us food, so we had to let them. At first, it wasn't very often, so that's why we didn't say anything. But lately, it happens more and more. Sometimes, she even comes to school to take us to the men. Dad had tears in his eyes, and then he hugged us both. I'm gonna take you home, and you're gonna stay with me from now on, and everything's gonna be better. Nothing will ever happen to you again, okay? Come on, let's go. He took both our hands, and we walked out together. I really thought at that moment everything was gonna be okay from now on, but it was too late for me. I was already damaged. I'm 15 now, and I've been through a lot. Mom had three more kids, 
Two years after the first one was born, he was taken away from her because she lost her house and became homeless. I was so numb from all the damage that I started hurting myself. I was even hospitalized a few times. But my mom somehow got her life back together and she had two more kids. Although one passed away after she was born from SIDS, but the other one is fine. I never met the youngest one though. It's been five years since I've seen them, my mom and my siblings. I miss them so much and I want to see them so badly, but I'm not allowed. I'm trying my best to get my life back on track. I'm still depressed and I'm still flunking out of school. Some days I can't even get out of bed. It's horrible having this thing that I know I can control. It just consumes my entire life. It's like a drug. Whenever something happens, I just keep going back to hurting myself. But at least it's been one month since I've hurt myself and wished to be gone. I'm trying my best. I'm really trying my best. <laughs>